To create my spreadsheet, I need to do a few things. First, I need to rename the spreadsheet. So I go up here to Unsave Spreadsheet and I click on it. Then I can rename it 4.11b, and then my first name and my last name. I put OK. Then I need to come back where it says private to only me. I need to make that public. So I click on it. I've already saved the spreadsheet. Let's try that again. Private to only me. Uh, there we go. Down here I can put Mrs. Keeler at gmail.com because I want to share it as a collaborator, but then up here it says that it's private, so I want to change that so that it's public on the web. I'm going to save and share. And then I can go ahead and close. So now it's public and it's shared with Mrs. Keeler and it, I've renamed it. So what I'm doing here is a binomial distribution. So I'm going to put here P, my value of P, my probability of success is 0 0.65. And then I'm going to want to make a table. So I'm going to do X. I'm going to want to figure out P of X. Well, we're going to let the computer do some work for us. So this equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these are the possible outcomes. If I have six trials, then I need to have a list up to six things, 0 through 6. That's actually seven things. And then I'm going to calculate the probability. But let's first go here and put combinations, success, failure. So combinations, I'm going to put in here this equals and you start writing the word com combination, but you're going to stop at combin. So C-O-M-B-I-N, parentheses. Now there are six trials here, so I'm going to do six, n equals six, comma, and then I'm going to come over here, I'm going to click, I have this zero in the B6, so I'm going to click on B6. And then put in parentheses, so it's going to be six choose zero. So there are is one way to get none of them right. You can get all of them wrong. Uh, if this were a quiz, this is uh, cable TV selectors, so I like to keep thinking I'm in a quiz. Okay, so this equals combin, like combination. I'm going to combine, I have six trials, and comma, whatever is in B7, in parentheses. So this is six choose one, six choose one, and there are six ways to choose one out of six, or in this case, to have exactly one person subscribes to Table TV out of the six. And I'm actually then going to go back, whoops, I'm going to go over here to the cell, and you see how it's got a little box in the corner? I'm going to drag that down. It's going to continue the pattern. So if I double click right here on, on D11, you'll see that it's combination of six, and then whatever's in B11 which in this case is a five. So this is six, choose five. So it automatically did those. So now my successes, I'm going to say this equals, make sure you use parentheses around this, the probability of success, and then I'm going to put the caret in there to mean exponent to raise to the power of whatever is in B6, or in this case zero. And anything to the zero power, remember, it has a value of one, so it's on there. Now this is equal, my failure is one minus the probability of success. So I say one minus, and I go up here to where I have the probability of success, and I click that, in the parentheses, so there's the probability of failure, one minus the probability of success, raised to the power of, now again, you need parentheses, and there's six trials, and you subtract the number of successes to get the number of fails. So I've got 1 minus C3, so that gives me the probability of failure, raised to the power of 6 minus the number of successes, so I get the number of failures. I'm going to go ahead and push enter. Let's do that again. This equals parentheses 1 minus the probability of success raised to the power of the number of trials 6 minus 
the number of successes, which in this case is a 1. It's over here in B7 in parentheses. So I can just go ahead and grab that corner and drag that down. Now here's the problem. When I drag it down, you'll notice it says value and 1. What happened here? So you'll notice it now says 1 minus C4, but my probability of success is in C3. Whoops. So I need to come in here, and where it says 1 minus C3, I need to put a dollar sign in front of the C and a dollar sign in front of the 3. So it says always C, column C, and always row 3. That's what the dollar signs are going to do for me. So now when I grab the corner, grab the corner and drag down, there, then it's going to calculate my probabilities. Now when I come over here to do success, I need to make sure again that I have a dollar sign around the C and dollar sign around the 3 so that I'm always using the probability that's in C3. So I can just grab the corner and drag that down. It's going to give me the probabilities for the successes. Now, to get the overall probability, it's the combination, how many, t how many ways can you get the success, times the probability of success raised to the power of the number of successes, times the probability of failure raised to the number of failures. So I'm going to go over here to the probability, and this equals the number of combinations times the number of successes times, well it's not the number of successes, the probability for successes times the probability for failures. I'm going to push enter. Now I do not want dollar signs because actually all of those numbers are going to change. So when I go to this one, I want it to be combinations times successes times failures. See how I went to all new cells? I didn't reuse any of the old cells. So since that's the case, I can go ahead and click on the cell, and in the corner it's got the little box, and I'm going to drag that down. And so those are the probabilities. Now obviously it has a lot of decimal places, and we're thinking, I don't need that many decimal places. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to go up here to the number format, see the 1, 2, 3 in the toolbar? I'm going to click down here. And it gives me an option to have two decimal places, but I actually want four. So I'm going to go to Custom Decimals. I'm going to choose four as my decimal places. So now you'll notice they're all only have four decimal places, and I think it would be nice if this were centered. So I'll go ahead and center those using the centering thing in the toolbar. Okay, so now I've got my probability, and I've got the random variable and everything, so now I can go ahead and make a chart out of this. So I'm going to highlight just the data. I'm going to highlight the data for the x and the probability of x, and I'm going to insert a chart. Insert a chart. And then I look here and I'm like, okay, what kind of chart do I want? Mm, I would like columns. And you'll notice here that it's trying to make two charts. I actually want to use column B as my labels. So you'll look over here at B, and these are what I want along the bottom. So column B is my labels. You'll see it makes me a nice little bar chart over here. I'm going to title this, and my chart title is Cable Subscribers. Okay, my horizontal axis is number of subscribers. My vertical axis is the probability. And I look at my chart sample down here and I'm like, mm, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and save the chart. And I'm going to move that down there a little bit. Let's scroll down a tad just so we can look at our at our charts. You'll notice here it's not like the normal curve. It's not symmetrical, meaning it doesn't look like it splits down the middle evenly. Uh, this is actually has what's called a skew, and it's leaning over here. This skews to the left. You'll notice that the, it trails off down here. It's skewing left, um, coming down. 
So this is my chart and I'm going to go ahead and use it.